when we were first diagnosed with my son Dave, uh, he was in diabetic ketoacidosis. And he was put on a diet that um, required him to eat about 40 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per meal. When we, when we followed that diet for a month, uh, Dave's blood sugars were typically in the three or four hundreds after every meal. And uh, we also were reading a lot about diabetic complications due to elevated blood sugars, and we found ourselves in quite a bit of panic. And we found Dr. Bernstein's book after a month and started following it. And ever since, our, uh, our blood sugars have become normal, and uh, our A1Cs are normal, that of a non-diabetic. And the mystery remains why these recommendations are still in place. And so I've, I've got Dr. Bernstein to agree to talk a little bit about this situation. And my first question is, um, Dr. Bernstein, when you're, when you're diagnosed, why, why was David put on this diet that, in, that included uh, carbohydrates? When I, when I started reading about what carbohydrates were, we, we just saw that they're um, glucose chains. What was the point of that diet? Uh, clearly, from what you just indicated, uh, giving a diabetic uh, uh, a meal's uh, worth of glucose chains doesn't make any sense. But that's what they're doing. And how did this come about? Well, there's been a lot in the newspapers of late about the recommendations of the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the U.S. Surgeon General going back to approximately 1980 and even earlier uh, advocating that fats are bad for people, they're bad for the heart and they're the cause of heart disease and strokes and therefore you should avoid all fats. That's how it started. Uh, now more recently it became saturated fats and these are the cause of strokes and heart attacks. Therefore, everyone should avoid fat. And what are they going to eat to stay alive if they're avoiding fat? The most obvious thing and the cheapest thing and the tastiest thing is carbohydrate, sweet foods. So uh, the guidelines were eat all the sweet foods you want, uh, eat all the bread and pasta, and they even recommended what they called high grains, which was the same as bread, but a little more of the husks of the wheat, uh, small percentage. Uh, and all these fantasies uh, applied to everyone in the world. Everyone in the world should avoid fats, even though they're essential for survival, uh, essential for functioning of brains and nerves and so on and uh, should uh, uh, substitute carbohydrate. And then myths developed from that point on uh, where people would, to enhance their argument, would start saying, well, carbohydrate is good for you and therefore you should eat as much as possible. And that's uh, what the American Diabetes Association went on and did. Now, they're trying to deny that in the light of recent evidence. The recent evidence is that uh, in general uh, heart disease is caused by inflammation. Uh, the inflammation can be caused by stress, it can be caused by very high blood sugars or even slightly high blood sugars, can be caused by infection and in fact uh, uh, bacteria have been found in the plaque of coronary arteries uh, showing that bacteria play a role in the inflammation that causes heart disease and uh, the old markers total cholesterol LDL and things like that have been shown in the scientific literature to be invalid so now the ADA the American Diabetes Association is backing off because they're beginning to look so ridiculous. So mm -hmm. I heard two uh, uh, ADA dietitians, people who actually help write their di dietary guidelines, being interviewed about a week ago. And they said, well, we're no longer advocating 
a high carbohydrate diet. We're saying that uh, you should adjust the carbohydrate to the needs of the individuals and we're uh, admitting that some individuals may do better on a low carbohydrate diet. They say that and indeed the guidelines don't uh, require a certain amount of carbohydrate as they used to, but the ADA's popular publications like their monthly magazine ADA forecast shows recipes for sweet foods, desserts, cakes, candies, and so on, loaded with not only carbohydrate, but added sugar. And uh, their advertisements, uh, the whole magazine is uh, virtually funded by advertisements for high carbohydrate foods, jellies, uh, cookies, cakes, and so on cake mixes. Um, they even uh, advertise their officially preferred sweetener, which is Domino cane sugar mixed half and half with stevia. <laughs> and this they're advertising and promoting and even writing articles about in their publications. So to say that they're no longer pushing high carbohydrate foods is not true. In fact, one could say it's an absolute lie because if you read their publications, you'll see what they're doing. And uh, uh, if they were not to be doing this, they would lose a tremendous amount of full color, full page advertising, which brings in millions of dollars per year. So they can't afford not to promote carbohydrate. 